Hi everyone, I'm Gary Knoll. Today, tart cherry juice can help improve endurance exercise performance. University of, of Canada, Journal of the American College of Nutrition, did an article on it. More on the Montmorency tart cherry juice as we continue, along with other health and nutrition stories. Then we're going to look at the Art of Exercise. This is a continuation of a, um, a video showing people step by step how to get into shape, no matter what your age or background. It's not long, probably about seven, eight minutes, and at least this way we can, we can start the process no matter where you live. Remember, we're heard all over the world, and the number one exercise, participatory exercise in the United States, is power walking. Over 60 million Americans power walk. But that doesn't mean they're doing it correctly. So I'll try to show you the right way of doing it to help you lose weight, strengthen muscles, burn body fat, especially belly fat, increase your metabolism. So all that we're going to do today. And I'm setting aside about 16 minutes at the end of the program to show you individuals, unrehearsed, un uncoached, just final 90-day exit interviews from the first part of our study, the anti-aging clinical study. That is interesting. Now, mind you, there are a lot of people. I'm only giving you a sample of some of them. Now, because these are not your typical person that's obese or suffering from arthritis or some other condition, these are people that are healthy to begin with. But look at their ages from the low 70s to 80 years of age, and here's what happened during a 90-day period. Just a sample to show you what is possible, because we're right at this tipping point where we let go of the old paradigms and embrace new ones. And it's not just those of us who are in the alternative movement as educators, as therapists, as scholars, but rather this is mainstream science and mainstream medicine who are taking a position that they've never taken before, not publicly, where they're going on the records before congressional hearings or before state legislators, as the gentleman who has four PhDs from MIT did yesterday. He excoriated the entire vitamin, one size fits all, they're safe and effective. He excoriated all that, saying that none of that is true. That is a big deal when you have someone with that kind of pedigree coming on our side. We also have medical doctors who are talking about what's wrong with medicine. Finally, they are having a conversation that they should have had 40 years ago and could have saved 20 million lives. At least they're having it now. So we're going to take all this forward because I believe we're about to change. In fact, I just was communicating with people this morning about I'm going to be leading a demonstration It'll be the largest demonstration I've ever led in my career, and it'll be in August, and uh, it'll be in Washington, D.C. I'll tell you all about it later. There's a lot going on now, and I can't let any more in, out of the bag about it because we intend to change some very important issues on behalf of the American public. So that's our program today. Again, we start with something that all of us can benefit from, and that is having more energy, feeling better, improving our muscle recovery after intense exercise. Now, a new first-of-its-kind analysis published in the Journal of the American College of Nutrition found that tart cherries improved endurance exercise performance of everyone in the study. They also looked at meta-analysis, 10 previous studies on tart cherries and exercise recovery. And what they found was it made an enormous difference. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter what your age. If you take, I'm going to say three ounces, you could dilute it of tart cherry concentrate, put it in watermelon juice or coconut water, lots of good potassium in there and electrolytes. It can make a big difference. Even cyclists who are cycling seven days at uh, about an hour and a half per day and swimming and running, they all benefited. So that's good. Something new. Also, from the University of Miami School of Medicine, 
comes an article published from the Journal of Neuropathy and Experimental Neurology saying that amino acid can be useful in treating ALS. Now, I was just counseling a family just two days ago with ALS, and it took me back to 1989. And one day, coming into the Tri-State Healing Center down on 72nd and Broadway, was a man I had worked with for 15 years, Don Benson. First of all, I didn't know for many years that he was one of the top authors of cowboy books, all these old Western books. And he was my editor. In fact, it was under him as editor-in-chief of a major publishing company, I did a series called The Secret Circle. These were factoid, meaning the underlying uh, message was real, but how I chose to write it was fictionalized. But if you read any of the whole series of books, they were very successful. <clears throat> that was all under him. He was a wonderful human being, but he had ALS. He could barely walk, and he had had ALS for about a year. It gets progressively worse, and there's no known cure for it. And there's nothing medicine can do that really even slows it down. But we, we put him on every kind of protocol. And you have to understand, you can't just go to a full throttle protocol. Depending upon each person's state of health, you have to gradually ease them into it to allow their body, their metabolism, their biochemistry, their DNA, their muscular system, their heart, to be able to absorb and utilize. You start slowly, and then every month you increase it. It might take six months before a person's on a full protocol. But over the next year, I saw he had stopped his, his decline, and he had made some improvements, especially in his speech, his balance. He wasn't dizzy anymore, and he had more endurance walking. <clears throat> in any case, there's new research on the amino acid L-serine, that's S-E-R-I-N-E. -E. It was successfully reducing ALS changes in an animal model. And they conducted the Verrett study at the Behavioral Science Foundation, a, a, a specialized research facility. And uh, after being exposed to uh, the, unfortunately, the neurotoxins the Verrett's develop aggregations of the misfolded proteins similar to those seen in human ALS patients and activated microglia type of immune cells in their spinal cord and brain, similar to those again in ALS. And then they ended up using a particular amino acid, L-serine, and they also used it with, with branched chain amino acids. And it made substantial improvement, considerably reduced the symptoms of ALS. Again, this is just one piece of a puzzle, not all of it. For people with ALS, it's a devastating disease that hits people in the prime of life, causing increasing paralysis and often results in death within two to three years after diagnosis. And at present, there are only two drugs that are available even to modestly slow down the progression. But now there's something in the way of L-serine, a natural amino acid that can make a difference. From Tianjin University in China comes a study about bilberry, B-I-L-B-E-R-R-Y. Now in the bilberry you have chemicals called antho, A-N-T-H-O, cyanidins, C-Y-A-N-I-N-S, and they improve neuroinflammation and cognitive dysfunction, especially in Alzheimer's disease. So what it means, it turns off inflammation and improves the brain, and especially the brain where you end up, because of inflammation, developing these beta amyloid protein plaques. And then when those plaques come down, your memory is threatened, and neurodegenerative diseases uh, with no effective treatment now, are, are the, the side effects. So cognitive functions are elevated with bilberry, and that's good. That's a big deal. It's anti-inflammatory, that's good. 
and improving memory, that's excellent. And reversing the defects to cognitive functions in the mice. So all that's good. And again, we're not looking at cures. We're looking at one single piece of a very complex puzzle. I want to keep all this in perspective. But then the more pieces we put in place, the more complete that that healing power becomes. <clears throat> From University in Australia, Macquarie, researchers find that a Western-style diet can impair brain function, meaning that a single um, fast food meal, and I mentioned this yesterday from a different study of high fat, high sugar, uh, you end up with worse memory scores. After a week of a high fat, high added sugar diet, that's virtually all the commercials you see on almost all these television programs, then your memory is worse. And in just one single week, the American diet can impair brain function and encourage encourage uh, people to overeat. So, say no to the high fat, high sugar, high animal protein diets and know that it's not doing you any good, it's doing you harm. From Harvard University comes a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Dairy milk is even more useless than you thought. The United States Department of Agriculture they really should put dot, 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 hyphen, um, corporate agricultural America, because they're one and the same. Quote, three servings of reduced fat milk a day is the perfect amount. Really? Well, that's what the dairy lobbyists want you to believe, and that's what the legislators that oversee these committees on health want us to accept but according to Harvard, it's not true. The team examined over 100 separate studies related to dairy milk intake and found, quote, this is from Harvard, the evidence in support of this long-standing recommendation is surprisingly thin, end quote. So, by the way, calcium in dairy milk does not aid in strengthening bones or preventing fractures. So it's all myth. In fact, countries with the highest milk consumption, like Sweden, tend to have the highest risk of hip fractures than those with the lowest consumption, like China, or many places in Africa. So if you want to prevent hip fractures, if you want to have stronger bones, don't drink milk. It's that simple. All right? From the North American Menopause Society, an apple a day might help keep bothersome menopause symptoms away. A healthy diet rich in fruits and vegetables is known to benefit the human body in so many ways. We discussed it all the time in this program. Now a new study suggests that it may also play a role in lessening various menopause symptoms. And this was published in Menopause, the journal. <clears throat> Although hormone therapy in a natural way with biocompatible hormones is okay, synthetic hormone replacement therapy is not. I would not accept that. But the Orthodox community is still giving it to 10 million women. But this study shows that dietary factors play a critical role in estrogen production and metabolism and consequently menopause symptoms. In particular, the consumption of fruits or Mediterranean diet, style diet, because everybody will approach the Mediterranean diet slightly differently, even in the Mediterranean. If you've been in the Mediterranean, if you haven't, it's wonderful to go there. The cultures, the people, the food, the clothing, the crafts, the architecture, the weather, but it, it changes. The Greek Mediterranean diet is different than the Spanish Mediterranean diet, which is different even in Spain uh, from, from its neighbors. <clears throat> so like Portugal. Portugal is an independent country, but it's also in the same body mass as Spain. But it's also different that if you go to the southern Mediterranean versus the northern Mediterranean, and then you've got a completely different diet, 
if you go on the other side of Italy, up and down, and, and you hit all of the eastern Mediterranean countries. So the high emphasis, emphasis upon fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and legumes, good. On pulses, excellent. Tubers, terrific. Some will have fish. Some will have less fish. A few occasionally will have meat. On the eastern Mediterranean, lots of meat. On the western Mediterranean, especially northern Mediterranean, less meat. So there are, ch there are corrections. But it's a good place to start, and then you can modify it to your own needs. But researchers uh, concluded that although some subgroups of fruit and vegetables um, were not showing menopausal reversal of symptoms, a high intake did, especially with urogenital problems. Citrus fruits, for example, were called out as having an adverse effect on uh, gynecological problems, too much citrus. So my suggestion would be fruits, pears, plums, very good. Apples, terrific. I would also figs and dates, outstanding and have been. They've been used in the Middle East for thousands of years. Uh, olives, these are the superstars. Now, if you're cleansing, grapefruit and lemon are the ticket. There's no better cleanse in the morning than green apple and lemon juice. But too much orange juice, that can spike your blood sugar. Too much lemon juice is not good. And if you hold it in the mouth, as some people do, and kind of swash it around their teeth, not a good idea. can erode enamel. But as a part of an overall cleansing and detox program, it's terrific. So they're not doing detox over there, but that's just an aside. Also from Oxford University comes a study through the George Institute of Global Health at Oxford University. And they found that links between high cholesterol levels and the risk of aortic valve disease. Now, this is something brand new. I have not seen this before. And what happens is that, well, having high cholesterol levels does not influence your risk of aortic or mitral valve uh, regurgitation. It does increase your risk of developing another major heart valve disease, aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis, S-T-E-N-O-S-I-S, is the most common form of heart valve disease in your developed country. A lot of people have it. The disease is characterized by restricted blood flow through the valve, which affects individuals commonly experiencing symptoms like chest pain, shortness of breath, heart palpitations, and in more severe cases, collapse and loss of consciousness. So one more reason why staying away from arachidonic acid, saturated fats, trans fats, animal proteins, and going towards the nuts, walnuts, the fats there, coconut oil, flaxseed oil, hemp oil, that gives you the healthy fats and even a healthier type of cholesterol because not all cholesterols are the same. And finally, you might just be addicted to your smartphone, physically affecting your brain. Heidelberg University in Germany. I, I went to Heidelberg to do research. Here in the United States, when I contacted the information officer at the FDA, and I asked them, what do you know about stem cell? This was an earlier form of, of uh, stem cell. And he said, there's no science behind it. It's all quackery. I said, are you sure? Yes. Okay. So I went to the University of Heidelberg they had 500 studies that they gave me in one day to read. So I sat there all day taking notes. These were all from peer-reviewed journals done at respected institutions. So then I went to two different clinics. And at both clinics, a Dr. Popoff's rejuvenation clinic, and then there was a clinic of Dr. Klaus Martin. And... Both of them have been in operation for a long time, had a whole medical staff, beautiful facilities. They had about 50 people there at each one. And so I spent 10 days just interviewing 
the guests and lengthen the doctors and saw that this all happened based upon the Dr. Nehans in Switzerland years before Winston Churchill, John F. Kennedy. A lot of people went to get this therapy. They just didn't talk about it. And it was um, implanting um, these stem cells within the person based upon what was wrong in their body. And they found that they could trace, if you're, you had kidney disease, that the stem cells would go to your kidney. Now, they could never figure out why. Why it didn't go to any other? If it's non-differentiated, it can go to any cell, become any cell, but it didn't. It always went to the cells that needed help. No matter how many times I asked that question of dozens of physicians and scientists, nobody could come up with an answer. So, <clears throat> maybe a little innate intelligence that no one should identify within the cell. Anyhow, what they found is this. In a world that relies on people having smartphones, from work emails to cashless businesses, you've seen the ads. Developing an addiction to your device is becoming increasingly difficult. While some think it's only a mental state, a new study suggests that this constant usage physically affects your brain, changes your brain the same way that drug addiction does. Regions in the brain known as gray matter, something that Mike Bloomberg doesn't seem to have. Uh, God, man. Can you believe how stupid that debate was? All of them. They're just moronic. Wow. Bedbug Budacek. What did he say? Um, yeah, we're going to have an answer in 50 years. Friend, no one's going to be around in 50 years. It's happening now. I mean, right now as we speak, the tipping points are tipping. And these people are clueless. In 30 years, in 20 years, yeah. And they just can't take the profit out of even the New Green Deal or Medicare for All, both of which are important. But these people are just, they have no sense of scholarship whatsoever. And they don't have the decency to say they don't know what they're talking about because they're dealing in these platitudes <clears throat> where they're trying to act like the great wise oracles. Yeah, they're not. In any case, what happens is you literally have a change in your gray matter, both the size and the shape, with social media addiction. This was published in the journal Addictive Behaviors. Now, gray matter is important because it controls a person's emotions and speech, and sight, and hearing, and memory, and self-control. Huh. Self-control. Well, there's all your artists. <laughs> there's all your singers, right? Go on a tour bus. Yeah, we have lots of, uh, uh, we have lots of self-control. I don't think so. I've counseled a lot of famous people that they lost it along the way somewhere. Very addicted to their success. Other studies have reported similar brain alterations due to drug usage. So given the widespread use and increasing popularity, the present study questions the harmlessness of smartphones. They're not harmless. And kids 8 to 12 years old who have their own smartphones are on them all the time. By the way, 67% of teenagers are on their phones all the time, six hours a day of their smart gadgets. And the average American spends four hours a day on their smartphone. So, what am I going to do about this tomorrow? I'm going to play you a half hour of a lecture I did, but never released it. And I was going through my archives, and because that's how I relax at night. I don't, I don't watch television. <clears throat> In fact, it was very funny. I was thinking about this morning when I was running. Um, on my radio show, and you'll see archive footage. You can see the photographs. My very first radio show. Peter Boyle and Julie Newmar. Now, Peter came on because he was a buddy of mine. We shared a floor together over on West 79th Street. And he would talk for hours and on end about what it was since he wasn't handsome and he wasn't charismatic. He had to do what that Robert Duvall, you know, would do it later in 
but be, he was talking about Paul Muni and people before them because the Godfather hadn't come out at that time. He had to be a character actor. And so years went by and he had nothing. But you also see photographs of him, Jane Fonda, Donald Sutherland, at, a, uh, at the Beacon Theater where we put together an anti-war uh, protest and did uh, street theater. Is is wonderful. I, thank goodness I took pictures of it. But in any case, he was there to talk. But Julie Newmar, I didn't know who she was because I didn't have a television. I didn't allow my daughter a television because I wanted her to read, and re we read every day a classic. And uh, she would go to her, her friend's house, and there she watched television. So I was, I was, and still am to this day, a television illiterate. I mean, if you Google stupidest person on earth when it comes to who's on television, my face comes up. <laughs> it's true. I don't watch it. I can't stand it. Um, it's a waste of time. So I watch documentaries. And I'll go back, and there was a big case that was sent down by our archivist. So you might want to go through this. And these are all 70 lectures that I've done, and I never released them. I don't know why I never released them. I was probably working on the big documentary, so I didn't. These were self-empowerment. And so I started watching this one on addiction. It is really interesting, the perspective. This is probably 20 years ago. And it's, it's as timely and current as possible. I'm going to play half that tomorrow for you on the air. And then I'm going to see about bringing all these out and putting them up on the Internet so you can, if you choose, you can download them and enjoy them. Anyhow, so that's, so we're going to deal with addiction and what it means to be addicted to your cell phone. I'll give you some different original perspectives on that, how to break the uh, habits, any addictive behavior. But that's tomorrow. Right now, we are 27 minutes into our program. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'm going to play, let's see, I'm going to play five minutes, Jesse, of our Art of Life um, excuse me, Art of Health, the exercise segment to show people would like to learn. And you can watch this. No problem here with copyright because I own the copyright on this. So you can watch it. You can go to the following, and that is uh, go to what youtube.com slash prnfm, youtube.com slash prn.fm, and you can watch it. And then... I'm going to, if anyone is in the audience who finished the 90-day anti-aging study, all I need is one. Call in. 888-874-4888. We'd like to hear from you, but I'm going to play what we filmed on the last day when people were exiting. Back in a moment. Please stay with us.
We, uh, we had this um, stripped out from a documentary, but evidently they didn't correct the uh, audio, so it's too low. We're going to correct that today, and we'll play that tomorrow, so you, everybody can hear it, because I couldn't hear it just now. Um, in any case, we'll, we'll finish that tomorrow. So what I'm going to do now, by the way, I'm looking for African-American journalists. You must have a legitimate background writing and publishing in newspapers or journals, something big is going to happen. So I want to give a gift to some people. Call 646-926-5422 if you are a legitimate African-American journalist and give them the background. And uh, we're not going to tell you what it is because you might be a plant. And what we're doing is going to be a, a real surprise to some people some corporations. In any case, I believe we have someone on the line now, so we're going to go to our anti-aging study final few testimonies. I'm not giving you all. I'm just three or four here. But we have, I'm told Ron is on the line. Hi, Ron. Hi, Gary. How are you? Ron from Atlanta. Ron, you finished all 90 days recently of the anti-aging clinical study. Yes. First, to put this in perspective so people understand, we have had no communication. You've not been coached or told what to say, correct? That's correct. This was a total surprise. Okay, good. Were you given two life-ending terminal diagnoses? Yes, Gary. I was given a terminal uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder known as COPD, and uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Those are the diagnoses. Is it correct that both your father died in hospice care from lymph, uh, leukemia, and both of your brothers died from COPD also in hospice care? That's <clears throat> correct, and that, that was very difficult to watch them to go through the agony that they went through in the case. So when you yes, were when you correct. were when. When you were told by both your oncologist and team of pulmonologists there was nothing more that could be done for you, you should put your life in order and consider going into hospice care, is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Gary. And instead, you decided to do something about it, and you came uh, to our project, correct? 
<clears throat> yes, that's correct. I felt, Ex- what do I have to lose? Yeah, you're going to die anyhow, right? That's correct, so, and I have uh, observed that in my family. So, you know, that was pretty scary for me. So I, I looked for a different alternative. Okay. Tell us what it was like your first couple of days, what you were going through. Well, I was having challenging, uh, uh, my breathing was challenged. I had uh, hardly no energy whatsoever. I was lethargic, uh, a lot of brain fog. Um, Just not in very good health, Gary. What happened 14 days later when I asked a group of you, would you like to go for a walk? Well, Gary, you... uh, you, I, I went out with uh, six other people, and you simply told us to see how far we could uh, power walk on that day. And uh, through after the 14 days, well, before the 14 days were actually up, I began to feel so much better in my breathing. So on the day that you challenged us to go out for the walk, uh, my lungs to open up, and I was breathing better than I had been breathing in about eight to ten years. So I, I was enjoying just the ability to breathe normally. And I just continued to walk. And I walked and I walked and before I knew it, I had completed uh, 30 miles. Did I not have to come out into the middle of the country road and grab you by the shoulders and say, friend, you've gone far enough? And you said, no, I, I've got energy. And I said, no, you got to stop now. Is that true? Well, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's true, Gary. That's true. I, but I wanted to feel, keep feeling the breathing, how good it was, and the freedom in breathing. So I had a ton of energy. I, I just wanted to see how far I could go. And yeah, you came out and pulled me off the road. That's correct. Well, we filmed all that, so <laughs> I know it's true. <laughs> and from not, from not being able to breathe and couldn't walk a mile your first few days to walking unimpeded full throttle and fast, 30 miles. That's an ultra marathon. And you not only did it, but a young lady with advanced multiple sclerosis did it. Uh, That's correct. A woman uh, from Tennessee, Michelle, wonderful human being, sweetest personality to ever meet. Uh, She she did it. Uh, Brought down down 110 points in her blood sugar. That's Uh, correct. Uh, the gentleman who hadn't been able to eat solid food for over, uh, what, eight years? Yeah. He, sto- he stopped at 14 miles because he said, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, how do you feel? He said, oh, I could go a lot further, but I'm hungry. And he was eating <laughs> solid food for the first time in yeah. 14 years. Those are just some of the people. Now, what did you learn from your 90 days in the first clinical anti-aging holistic study ever done? Well, I learned that uh, meditation and introspection plays a very important part on one's belief system. And through that mechanism, I stopped limiting myself through the physical limitations that, uh, you know, that, that, that I was under. As a result of that, Gary... I exceeded my limitations, and I have a whole new lease on life as a result of that. I learned that uh, eating a vegan diet uh, has given me more energy than I ever experienced eating uh, regular foods. I learned that um, um, there's just so much beauty and uh, life that comes with being in nature. Um, It was phenomenal, breathing the fresh air, uh, being away from the noises of the big city, how much more calming that it it allowed me to do uh, a lot of growth within. And as a result of that, I put all that to work and uh, started exercising physically uh, in the gym a lot more and uh, continuing with the power walks. Uh, it has helped me with my anxiety and my depression. Um, there are so many other components that I've learned and I'm experiencing and having an excellent quality of life as a result. What is your age, Ron? 
I'm 70 years old. Okay. Being completely candid, if any human being in this audience were to look at you, how old do you think they would say you were? Well, without being vain, I would say, uh, and I've actually had this to happen recently, uh, someone, uh, well, more than uh, a few people told me that I look no more than 52 years old, but because they know a little bit about me, they said if they didn't know that, they would think I was about 46 years old. Well, I saw you working out in the gym. You have abs. You have no body fat. Your body looks about 25. And you're coming back for the advanced group. That's correct. March That's 22nd. Correct. Well, Ron, thank you for sharing your point of view. We look forward to seeing you back down there. And uh, with the same number of people, we have to keep it identical number of people, different people, and then an advanced group, because I'm working on an advanced protocol right now, including, by the way, I'm going to have a subgroup based upon the enormous improvements we all saw, you saw, everyone saw in the end-stage Alzheimer's of Pieta's mom. So that yes. inspired me. I, I had hoped that they would stay another two months, but they, they chose not to. But this time, based upon having reversed, what did you see reverse in her? Oh, I saw someone who had gone from a canatonic uh, situation where she was not making any eye contact, uh, gibberish, uh, just being totally um, in, a, in a dark space, to someone who was now talking, who was actually making complete sentences, who was smiling now, who was actually taking cups of water in her hand from other people who had been giving it to her. Now she was drinking it on her own. I saw remarkable results in that Alzheimer's uh, patient. I was so inspired by what I saw that that's why I'm doing a subgroup of five of Al Alzheimer's patients to see if we can't now reverse it, even adding a new protocol, because I don't have to stick with the original protocol because she, wasn't a, she was just one person. So therefore, she wasn't part of the regular group. You can't change a protocol in the regular group when you're duplicating, but I'm adding a whole new protocol for uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. Ron, I look forward to seeing you back. Great. I'll be there, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to invite some people with Alzheimer's and dementia, memory loss, multiple sclerosis. I have a new protocol. And to be a part of the anti-aging study group, a subgroup, and you can reach out to Luann if that interests you. And I'll give you Luann's phone number. You can give her a call. And she's the one who, you know, will talk with you and see if this is for you or not. All right? And I'll give you that. Here's her phone number. 903-881-7008. 903-881-7008. We have no more openings in the group, doing it from home. And I think we're filled with a regular group. I have to match equal identical numbers, so I can't have extra people. I'm sorry. <clears throat> but in any case, whatever the outcome is going to be, and if it's positive, it'll make world history and science, in which case then I will share this with the whole world, the whole protocol. Now we're going to hear some of their ending statements. This is the exit statements, uh, just a few. To, I always been positive, but I'm even more positive now. And to me, I don't need to compete with anyone. I compete with myself. I was doing, when I got to the villa, only two miles or a mile a day. The last day I did 14 miles. That's not 26, but for me, if I could do 14, I could do 26. And at the end of the day, there was no pain. And it was like, I could have kept going if it didn't get dark outside. <laughs> so it's like, age doesn't mean anything anymore. There's no, I don't see boundaries. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's like, go for it. I tell people, if you want my relative, my son, his wife, if you want to do something, don't let anybody stop you. And that's my attitude now, more than ever. 
doing the juicing every day, uh, exercising, walking, all of the, um, the protocol that was incorporated in this anti-aging study has changed my life. I am a much better person and I feel good. When you're ill, you don't want to do anything. When you're full of energy, you keep going. Nothing can stop you. It's like you have a battery and you keep going and going. And I, I think it's, I, I thank the Lord that I, I thank Gary, I thank Luan that I've been in this study. I feel much happier. I feel that when I put my mind to something, I can't do it. Before I would be, oh, what would people say? Or I cannot do that. All of that is gone. The negativity is gone. I listen to myself or to people that are telling me the right thing and the other the other people I reject it. I don't dwell on it. Before I used to think about the past, the, the present and the future. Now I concentrate in the present. And I am a, I, I'm much happier, I'm more, more joyful, I'm more confident. I do things for me. If I want to wear something, I wear it because I feel comfortable. I wear my hair anyway, the way I want to. I do my, I live my life mostly to please me and the people that I love that want to follow my example. I don't have to preach to anybody, but I am I'm noticing that a lot of people are doing things the way I do them. They tell me, why don't you eat meat? And I go, it has a face. <laughs> so eventually I see them eating less, or I see them doing something that they used to criticize me for. So life is better. There was real physical you know, changes. I lost weight. I got thinner and everything. So that, that's real. But there was also sort of like mental changes mental changes too that I felt I felt uh, more open-minded I felt more liberated and uh, I felt good about like the future I felt like where I, where I would what I was doing making decisions and everything that is uh, that is because of the um, the the life energies that we learned about are life energies. And I found out what my life energy was, my particular primary life energy. And it was liberating. It was freeing me up the way to think about the future. And it was easier to make decisions. So it was a, definitely a, a, a mental aspect of it, really, really significant. And, and, and uh, opened me up to a lot of new, th new areas, new beliefs, you know? It seems to be all coming to me at once, rapidly, <laughs> you know? But uh, I lost the pounds, I gained a better physique, and, and not only that, but the, uh, but the, uh, the strength. I gained a lot of strength because I wasn't really doing any weights before. I went to Texas. So I started doing those strength exercises. And uh, there's, there's where I made a big change. And, and my statistics proved it. You know, my, my muscle mass and my uh, bone density, they, 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 good figures, very good figures. They tell me they're remarkable, you know. And I need that because I needed that because I had like osteoporosis. I used to have osteoporosis. Maybe I don't have it now. I don't know. But uh, I had a bad case of osteoporosis. Not, not that I felt it, but when I went for a DEXA scan, the doctor said, whoa, you know, <laughs> you needed this, you know? So I'm taking, I've been taking strontium for, for many years. Uh, and uh, and uh, when they did the statistics before and after, of, of when I went to Texas, they said, "Oh, you, you, your bone mass is, is uh, weight has really uh, increased significantly." You know, I do not feel like 73 years old. I mean it. I mean it. <laughs> you know, 
Some people may say, well, you're 73, you're close to death or something. I forget that. I, I, feel, I feel I'm far away from, I feel like I was 30, 40. I feel the same way. I mean, I have no pains and this and that and limitations. I don't, I don't have those, any type of problems like that. So my body feels good. You know, I feel like I could, I could do things, you know. The same thing as when I was 30 and 40. I, I, I don't feel any different. Not at all, thank God. <laughs> I feel confident at this point that I could modify the program to suit me a little, you know, just tweak it, you know? And I know that it will be very sustainable doing that. Well, I was at the villa for two weeks. That was the retreat. And I was getting such good results, but I didn't trust myself to um, develop the good habits I needed to in order to sustain. So when I was asked to join the anti-aging program, I jumped at the opportunity because I felt that I was just at the cusp of starting to feel my aches and pains, um, my um, ability to, you know, uh, well, my brain fog and the fact that I wasn't having clarity of mind. Um, I was feeling fatigued a lot and uh, to the point where I stopped even working freelance because I just needed to focus on my health. Um, again, it wasn't until my doctor who saw my blood sugar levels start to creep up, she said to me, if you don't get this under control, I'm going to have to put you on insulin and that's what made me start to look for a program. And before my retreat, my blood sugar levels was fasting at about 189. And I wasn't able to bring it down. I was trying to exercise, I was trying to correct my diet, but obviously it's not what I was able to accomplish. Um, since then, um, since the dietary change in the supplements, I have gotten my fasting levels to below 100, which technically makes me non-diabetic. But I have to maintain and sustain that for at least three months before they decide to take me off the medication. And I'm so close. Um, when I started, my A1C was 7.1, and today it's 6.7. So that's a really drastic change in order to be non-diabetic I have to be at 5.7 which I'm not too far from. I learned to power walk and that was a new thing for me because I always thought walking was well you know I didn't necessarily always break sweat um, but I started walking two miles which I thought was a big feat for me and after so many months or days of conditioning, 60 days, um, I was able to challenge myself and to do the marathon at 23 point. She did 23 point uh, six miles, excuse me, 26.3 miles. She did a full marathon, had energy galore, and I watched her, I timed her, we filmed her doing 800 non-stop sit-ups with a weight. Try that in any top gym in the United States. Mind you, all the people you just listened to were in their 70s. And she was the one, now her blood sugar dropped 100 points. <clears throat> Only one lecture out of 53 was on nutrition. Every single lecture was on motivation, the meaning of life. That's what people are missing. That's what corporate America is missing. That's what all these programs out there are missing. They're all out to make money. They're wanting to uh, get people uh, get people enrolled in things as if just just biking is what you do, or just going out for jogs. No, no, it's all with behavior. And by the way, all this is possible because of a team. The team, uh, Luann heads the team, but Barbara, uh, Barbara Duggan and Claire Adams, and Cindy, and Valentina, great chef, Shelley, my daughter, Michael, Santos, uh, and Leonard, 
and uh, Adriana, and even coming in from Australia to help us, Lacey Lauren, uh, who's big on helping groups all over the world. She helps with people who are in crisis. And uh, in fact, she's one, her group was one that invited me to set up a holistic protocol for the Syrian refugees that were in Greece, and I did. So we have a wonderful group of people. I, I'm not mentioning everyone. There's another 40 people. But those are just the people in the kitchen. So when you get a great meal, understand that everybody participated in making sure, and, 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 and all the uh, people like uh, Kathleen from Sedona, outstanding artist, uh, humanist, motivating person. She is the spiritual core of the entire Sedona, Arizona community. She comes down and uh, she helps. So we have a lot of people who put it all together, and all of them deserve credit. Inside John Q, in the gyms, the yoga teachers, the meditation teachers, the art of healing, Elaine Ryan, uh, Connie, she's the drill sergeant in the kitchen. <laughs> she literally is a drill sergeant. Master, shut up. We're late. Get this plate, <laughs> plate out. <laughs> yeah, that's a real personality, too. And we need that. You need people that are, you know, going to make sure if it's supposed time to eat that everybody gets the food out. So we have a wonderful group of people. I couldn't be happier with all of them. So I want to thank them because they're all a part of everyone else's success, all pieces of the puzzle. Thank you all for listening, and I look forward to sharing more tomorrow. And we'll have that corrected audio of the biking and power walking so you can watch that as well. And a special investigative report I'm doing tomorrow as well. Have a nice day, everyone.